some within the front office want to wait for Lonzo to come back. We talked about this on one of the shows before the end of the season when he got that surgery. And I actually, if you remember, I read that thing off about the surgery. That's like a very, that's a complicated surgery. Um, there's no guarantees he's coming back at all. I don't believe anybody has ever returned to play in the NBA consistently after having that surgery. I am pretty sure that's what we talked on a previous show when I had mentioned like a one-off surgery. No, yeah. the surgery has been done before, but nobody has successfully recovered and returned to playing in the NBA, let alone at the level that they played at. I believe Brandon Roy might have had a similar surgery, um, but – I mean, they replaced cartilage in his knee and shit. Yeah, the chances of Lonzo ever coming back need to be thrown out the window. The consideration of waiting for him should never happen if you're not allowed to get whatever that exemption is uh, due to him potentially never being able to play basketball again. Um, if you can't get that, you go into this rebuild mode and you eat that contract. And if the dude comes back at some point, well, you're still eating that deal and he's ready to play and he can prove himself and earn another contract then it's a blessing and you get Lonzo ball back possibly still with Zach here. If you don't decide to move on from him. Um, but regardless, Lonzo ball, uh, a three and D point guard that allows uh, other people to, you know, facilitate the rock as well is a valuable asset. If you get him back, but waiting for him is not something that should even be entertained. Whoever's opinion that is in the front office needs to be fired immediately. Cause how you just piece that up and worded that is exactly what should be going through their minds. You don't know if he's coming back. So why are you going to risk giving an extension to DeMar DeRozan, bringing back Vooch when you saw that it didn't work, and then having Zach here, it did not work. So you want to wait for Lonzo to get back, but you don't know he's coming back. So, like, I, I hate that we're even talking about this again, but that was a legitimate report that came out. Well, Is that I mean, there's something that want to wait for him? Especially with this franchise, what we went through with Derrick Rose. Don't keep this lingering no, over right? us anymore. We've already done this for a year and a half. Just shoot us straight. Like, Lonzo may never play basketball again. We are going to do everything as an organization to support him in his recovery, but we do not have a timeline. We don't anticipate there being a timeline. I mean, he's not even slated to play. Tells us otherwise. He's not even slated to play in 23-24. No. So he's already going to miss one more season. I believe he has a player option for that $20 million that following year. Because I believe we only got him for four. You can only yeah. sign players that you have bird rights to for five. Yeah. Uh, even in a sign and trade scenario like deal. with him. Um, so obviously year one, this was year two. Next year is going to be year three. And I do believe that fourth year is a player option, which in a recovery year, I'm sure $20 million is uh, more than acceptable. So um, if he's able to return in that final year, but to play out like this when you actually have your pick again, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, obviously, you'll still be in the lottery, but you'll have a 8.6% chance in the top four instead of, you know, increasing your odds in a season where you know you're not going to have the guy that makes the engine of this team go. And we all want it to happen. We all want it to go back this year. I want to hold on to that 32 fucking games or whatever it was, but you, you got to let it go, uh, especially when it's your job. Like, you're, you're supposed to have the cojones to make the decisions, and you came in swinging them things, Um overpaying for stuff over under evaluating certain things. And, uh, you know, you're just swinging your nuts around with the blindfold on and now we're in debt. We, we really can't move we're between a rock and a hard place. And you either got to pay the dude that you traded all this stuff for, or uh, you got to find a sign and trade for him. Cause you got to get, you have to get some value for Vooch if he moves on and he's not on this roster next year. We all feel bad for Lonzo. We all hate the situation. And it's something that I've kind of reflected on since the season ended and, and thinking about, like, the, the rise and fall of Arturis Karnaschovas and Mark Eversley, right? I think I've learned a pretty valuable lesson on, on patience. Um, and I think that my patience was very tested within the Garpax era and how we were close with Rose and then how it didn't happen. And like you just pointed out, how we let it linger on a little bit too long with Derek. And then you come into this, right? Now you're on fire for 35 games. We're on top of the world. We're talking shit. We love all the moves that he made. Okay, great. How quickly things change. This is what I'm really nervous about going into this offseason. The swings that he took were literal my GM swings on a video game. To build a team, put them together, and, and, and fucking ride and turn an injuries off. Unfortunately, can't do that in real life. And any Jerry Reinsdorf owned team, everybody's going to get hurt. And it's going to happen, and I can't tell you why. I think God hates him. I'm not sure, but it is what it is. 
but I don't feel super comfortable. And, and there's no other way around this. Like, do you feel comfortable with, with them orchestrating a trade because of how creative they were two off seasons ago, like with, like with the Knicks or like with Portland or, or, or something like that? Like, do you feel they can get the maximization of set offer back? Or do you feel like you're in literal hell? I think they've played themselves and they've showed their hands to a certain point and backed themselves into a corner where it makes it hard to get true value. And obviously as fans, we always somewhat overvalue um, our own players. Obviously you want more back in a trade. So I, I think we'd have to take that out of the evaluation, but just because of the spot that this team is in and everybody knows there's blood in the water over here. Oh, yeah. Um, and probably everybody is available uh, available outside of maybe Patrick Williams.